Have you ever studied for a test by reading your notes and then when you got your test back you were confused as to why you got a bad grade? Turns out there's a significant difference between reading and studying. When you read something, your goal is to kind of get just a general understanding of the content that you're reading, whereas studying is focused on recalling that information, pulling it back. So when you read your notes, you're not gonna be able to recall that information because you're not applying the right strategies. And we're gonna go over some of those strategies in a little bit, but before that, I wanna talk about the importance of reading or studying with a goal or purpose in mind. Ooh, here's an example to prove it. Let's pretend that you were a bus driver and you put the keys in the ignition and you drive off and you go and at the bus stop, you start by picking five people up on the bus. And those five people go with you to the second stop. And on the second stop, you pick up three men and two of the people on the bus leave. Then you go to the next stop and then an old elderly man with a cane starts walking up there. And then behind him is a guy with a bicycle who can't quite get it onto the bus and eventually ends up and goes and leaves. And at the next stop, a pair of twins come on the bus and one person gets off the bus. Then you go to the final station and everyone gets off the bus. So I have two questions for you guys about the story. Question number one is how old is the bus driver? And question number two is how many stops did the bus make? Now, if you're rolling your eyes right now and you're looking at me funny, probably I got you. And the reason is because you didn't preview what information you'd be looking for in the story. In other words, you didn't have a purpose or goal to your studying or reading into this story. With that purpose or goal, you would have known what to look for and you would have been ready to answer the question. So the purpose of looking for information is super important when studying and when reading. So the answer to the riddle is that I said that you were the bus driver. So in my case, that would have been, I'm 28 years old. However old you are would have been the answer to that one. And there were five stops. So if you were ready to look for that information, you would have been able to achieve it. So how do you prepare your brain to be ready to take in new information when you study? Well, you don't want information to be brand new when you're reading it. So you need to preview the information. And I'm gonna walk you guys through a strategy to do just that. So to make information stick on your brain, the first thing you do is you're gonna flip through every page and you're looking to see what is on every single page. You're seeing how long the chapter is, how many words compared to images. Does anything stand out to you? This can be done on a book, a textbook, or even in a YouTube video, you might scroll down to the comments to see what some of the information is before watching the video so you have enough context so you can then take in that new information. This is gonna be your first of four repeats of this information to help that repetition make it stickier in your brain. And then you're gonna to go to the end of the chapter and you're gonna look for the quiz or what questions are being asked at the end. And by doing this, you're gonna know what to look for, what the author of the chapter thought was so important to be gained. In other words, you're reading with a focused attention. So then, now that you know what you're looking for, you're gonna to go to the beginning of the chapter and read all of the bold prints, basically the stuff they want you to see. And this is how they broke down the information for you. Then you're gonna go back to the beginning of the chapter and you're gonna read the first and last sentence. You're not reading this for comprehension, you're simply reading this for exposure. So you're not gonna understand the full chapter yet because all you have are these dots of information. And these dots are your map, which is going to help you read all the information and you're gonna connect the dots. Those dots are the preview of the coming attractions of all the information. And now that you have all those pieces of information, you can now go through and read it only one time. So the formula is a lot of work, but it's not a lot of work compared to going back and doing it again and again and again. And when you're trying to cram for a test and you're hoping and praying over here that it's gonna stay in your head, it may not. But the proved method to make it stay, the systematic approach is using repetition. Repetition is the core of learning. And by giving yourself multiple repeats with a quick overview, what the author thought was the most important stuff, the bold print and the first and last sentence, you're giving your reticular activating system, your internal radar, multiple repeats of the information. These repeats of information are not only essential while previewing the information, but it's also important after learning the information. Let's check out why it's important to review information even after learning it. 
Erman Ebbinghaus studied his own memory and how quickly he forgot things, and he graphed over the course of a month how quickly he did, in fact, forget things. And originally, you could see his recall got worse and worse and worse as time progressed, and he created something called the forgetting curve. And this forgetting curve over here mapped out how we forget. And he mapped out two situations. One, a theoretical situation, assuming that after a lecture, we remembered 100% of all the information. And then a kind of more realistic estimation that we probably only remember about 80% after a full lecture. And he tried to figure out how we're able to beat the curve. And basically what he found out was that if we have multiple repeats of the information, specifically four repeats over the course of about a month with spaced repetition, he's able to fight the forgetting curve and we wouldn't forget as easily. So what ended up happening is he practiced where if you had class immediately after class, 10 minutes after, he got himself a repeat of the information through reviewing his notes or practicing through multiple different study methods. Speaking of four reviews of information, this is my favorite way to study. It is called the Feynman technique. And what you have to do for the Feynman technique, there are four parts to it. The first part is just pick what you want to learn. The second step is to write out an explanation as if you were going to teach it to someone else. And I find that using an iPad and Apple Pencil, being able to draw everything out is a fantastic way to do so. By writing your own notes and drawing your own pictures, it's being embedded in your memory. Third step of the Feynman technique is to fill in the gaps of what you don't understand. And the best way to figure out what you don't understand is to read through your notes and to look for something that you don't understand, and then you go look that up on Google. The final step is to make it as succinct as possible so that anyone could understand you, almost like you're gonna explain it to a five-year-old. And by going through all four of these steps, you've proven that you know it, because if you're explaining it to someone, especially on a video, it is impossible for you to not know it. Now back to the forgetting curve. And then after 24 hours, he repeated that information again, so instead of for falling down to about 50-60% of the information, that repeat helps you remember the information. After one week, and then after about a month, those same four repeats ended up so that his final amount of information was between 80 and 90% of the original information. So those repeats help embed it into memory. So what we learned from the forgetting curve is four repeats of information helps us Remember that information through spaced repetition. So in conclusion, to make sure that you remember everything that you want to do, don't just read information, make sure you actually study it. And when you are studying something, make sure you use something like the Feynman technique to make sure you embed it in your brain. Make sure you preview the information the four ways I showed you and make sure that when you are reviewing the information, you space it out according to the forgetting curve in those intervals so you maximize what you remember and you don't forget stuff. Hopefully this was helpful. If you guys liked the video, please subscribe, like the video. I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great day.